All right, guys, so it reads, a 70-year-old man with history of hypertension presents with concerns over memory issues. He has been having memory issues that seem to fluctuate day to day. His wife also reports that her husband has been having visual hallucinations, such as seeing small children run through their house, which never occurred. Which of the following is the most, is mo the most associated with the patient's diagnosis? So there's a couple key factors on this, guys, but you got to know for the step exams, basically the neurocognitive uh, disorders. Okay. And really the, the main ones with that, and, and here's how you have to look at it. You got Alzheimer's. Okay. You know, they're going to test on Alzheimer's. Why? Because it's the most common cause of, uh, basically dementia, uh, neurocognitive, uh, disorder associated with dementia. And then you'll have this thing, Lewy body, All right? That's the, uh, kind of comes in number two. And then you start going downhill from there. You got frontotemporal dementia, also known as PICS. And then you'll, it's even kind of lesser, less, lesser frequency, uh, that creutzfeldt jakob disease. Uh, that's, you know, we'll talk about that one here in just a second. Uh, but it is associated with, you know, prions and uh, myoclonus. I guess I just couldn't, couldn't wait to say it. And then the other differential that I really want you, the, the purpose of this is Parkinson's, okay? Parkinson's disease, and I want you to throw that one in there now, uh, because there's an there is an association mainly with the Lewy body. Uh, to meet the diagnosis criteria for Lewy body, you can have Parkinson's symptoms. So you're going to have to differentiate between these two. Now, so let's go through these real quick. Okay, Alzheimer's. Okay, what is the uh, Alzheimer's most common cause? You got to know some some of these enzymes or genetic. Well, I should say enzymes, but genetically, you are at risk for early onset Alzheimer's if you have these guys: presenlin one, presenlin two, and amyloid precursor protein uh, twenty one. Right? And why is it twenty one? Because who has uh, higher risk for developing Alzheimer's? Uh, the, the the trisomy twenty one, right? Uh, Down syndrome. So if you have presenlin one, presenlin two, amyloid precursor protein uh, gene that's on chromosome 21, you're at risk for early onset Alzheimer's. Late onset, how many letters are in the word late? One, two, three, four. Amylo, uh, the APOE4 gene is associated with late onset Alzheimer's. Okay, so early onset, think presenlin 1, presenlin 2, amyloid precursor protein. Late onset, uh, APOE4. Okay, and then of course, what do you? What would you find? And this is kind of like, what would you find under microscope or something, you know, like that, um, or even you know, on exam MRI, you would have the neurofibrillary tangles. Okay, neurofibrillary tangles, senile plaques, um, extracellular beta amyloid, uh, you know, uh, things like that. Obviously, so neurofibrillary tangles. So, but again, what you need to know. For Alzheimer's, which you better start memorizing repetitively, presenlin 1, presenlin 2, amyloid precursor protein is for early onset. Late onset, APOE4. APOE2, protective. Okay? They could ask you, they could give you a, a question that says the patient has Alzheimer's, and then they could say, which of the following genes uh, would be protective of the of, of a patient with this condition and then you better jump on apoe2 so apoe2 protective apoe4 late four letters in, in late and then presenlin 1 presenlin 2 amyloid precursor that's at risk for early onset alzheimer's now lewy body and that's the purpose of this of this question stem for lewy body here's what here's what i want you to understand if you ever see the word fluctuating okay fluctuating outside of a delirium okay this person uh, you know like in this situation they clearly have a uh, dementia process but if you ever see the word fluctuate you better take a long look at Lewy body okay now with Lewy body you can have Parkinson's symptoms okay and now when we when you say Parkinson's symptoms what are you thinking about the pill rolling uh, you know the resting tremor the rigidity you know, postural instability. Yeah, you know, they're they're leaning forward, uh, kind of got that shuffling kind of gait. Parkinson's disease. Okay. Now, they would say Parkinson's disease is associated with Lewy body, right? It's kind of a back and forth there. So you have to, you know, you have to understand that they're going to make you choose between these two on some question somewhere on the step exam. 
Now, Parkinson's more of a clinical diagnosis. You know, motor symptoms are gonna come, basically, pretty much gonna come first. And that's kind of the same thing we talked about previously with Lewy body. You might see the, the motor symptoms develop years ahead of the memory system, whereas in uh, memory issues, whereas in Alzheimer's, you're gonna get more of the memory issues and then later get the motor symptoms, okay? That's a huge point, I can't stress that enough. And there's a there'll be a short, uh, one of the short videos that really kind of stressed the difference between that. Again, Parkinson's, you're going to see the more of the motor symptoms come first, and then you're going to have dementia. In Alzheimer's, more of the dementia symptoms, and later get them in the motor, uh, typically. Now, with Parkinson's, uh, the motor symptoms, alpha synuclein. Okay, there's an alpha synuclein, uh, depigmented, the uh, pigmented uh, substantia nigra, right? And then what's, so, what's the big deal about the substantia nigra? That's one of the dopamine uh, pathways. And then it's the dopamine pathway for what? Movement. So would you see a, uh, a you know, would it be hypopigmented or would it be excessively pigmented? Well, think about this, that, and that's a good question, all right? What, would, what, what, gives you, what gives us pigment in our skin? Melanin. Okay, and if I were to go, if I were to travel upstream from how we develop melanin, what am I going to have? Well, I'd have, uh, technically I'd have tyrosine, and eventually I'd make my way to dopamine. And then if I have dopamine, it can make melanin. So if I don't have the pigment, I have decreased melanin, so chances are I'd have decreased uh, dopamine, right? Well, heck, that's what Parkinson's is. You have decreased dopamine, so there's a hypopigmentation, a depigmentation of the substantia nigra. Why? Decreased melanin because of decreased uh, dopamine. Okay, so there's there could be some questions in that. But a long story short, I mean, kind of too late, but Parkinson's associated with Lewy body dementia. Lewy body dementia, it's the second most common neurocognitive disorder to secondary to dementia. Look for the word fluctuating, and of course, visual hallucinations. You know, that's kind of one of those key words that if I see visual hallucinations outside of delirium or such in its dementia, I got to be thinking Lewy body. Frontotemporal dementia, also known as uh, PICS, you better be thinking there's personality changes. You know, so the guy you take, you know, the, the uncle or the dad, you take them outside, now they're making sexual comments or just well out of character and it's all of a sudden. Uh, and that's also associated with uh, tau protein. Okay, and then the creutzfeldt jakob uh, dementia or disorder disease, uh, creutzfeldt jakob prions, and I believe it was, gosh, I don't, I don't, I don't give you the wrong, you know, the seizure, uh, you know, the kind of seizure frequency and stuff, but think prions, think myoclonus, and this is, uh, you know, very rapid, okay, when there's a rapid dementia, like boom, all of a sudden, uh, think uh, creutzfeldt jakob and then you might also think that they, they might throw in that hole. They might have had some, some type of corneal transplant or something like that that would have exposed them to the prions, myoclonus, and then, again, rapid dementia. So here's all the ones that you really got to know, guys. I mean, but you better be able to differentiate these. Again, Alzheimer's, most common, most common one. What, what puts you at risk for early onset? Presendlin 1, presendlin 2, amyloid precursor protein. What about late onset? Four letters in the word late. ApoE4. What's protective? ApoE2. What am I going to see? Neurofibrillary, neurofibrillary tangles. Kind of a generalized, um, gosh, you know, what, what, what am I going to say? Like, when you see on exam, you're going to, you know, kind of a, a wasting of the, on MRI, basically, of, of the general, you know, just brain volume, you could say. Lewy body. Look for the word fluctuating. Uh, visual hallucinations. Um, associated with Parkinson's syndrome. So in this case right here, in this question, 70-year-old fluctuates hallucinations associated with what? Well, I, you know, I wish they would say something that was very uh, Lewy body-esque. Um, yeah, I wish they would say Lewy bodies in here, right? Or diagnosis, but they don't. They have alpha-synuclein. Well, alpha-synuclein is associated with Parkinson's, right? Um, Lewy body dementia. So of course, this answer is gonna be A, Super, superoxide dismutase 1, uh, associated with, that's more of ALS, kind of just threw that in there. And again, we talked about those guys. Frontotemporal, personality changes, okay? Crucial Jakob, prions, myoclonus, that's the jerking, rapid onset. 
And then again, Parkinson's, associate Parkinson's with Lewy body because Lewy body typically has Parkinson's symptoms in the diagnosis. This is more of a uh, movement disorder. You can think of it like that, okay? Decreased Parkinson's, substantia nigra, alpha synuclein. Uh, but you got to have these down, guys. And again, this is all in your step. You, sh you should be able to look through that step one book and just ramble uh, through these. But again, answer choice uh, A, alpha synuclein. Learning point is understand Lewy body and Parkinson's and how they're associated with each other.